ants, bees, wasps, and sawflies? This is the order Hymenoptera. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. So today we're talking about the order Hymenoptera, a diverse order containing the ants, bees, wasps, and a group you may not have heard about, the sawflies. And when I say diverse, I'm not exaggerating. We talked in the beetle episode how beetles make up a fifth of all described plant and animal species currently on Earth. However, if we were able to discover and describe every species on Earth, it's believed that the Hymenoptera would actually be more diverse than the beetles. This is because a lot of Hymenoptera are small parasitic wasps that are incredibly diverse, yet quite cryptic, as they can be very hard to tell apart from one another some seemingly only different in the hosts that they target. But we're gonna get into that later. For now, let's just talk about what a Hymenopteran even is. Hymenoptera does have some general traits we can go off of, but most of these traits do have some exceptions. Ants, bees, and wasps all have what's called a petiole, which is a thin constriction that connects the thorax and the abdomen, sometimes referred to as a wasp waist. However, sawflies lack this constriction. Hymenoptera also tend to have four membranous or transparent wings, with the hindwings being smaller than the forewings. And these thin, clear wings actually give Hymenoptera its name. Hymen means membrane, and Terra means wing. So Hymenoptera means membrane wings. However, even though this is their namesake, there are wingless wasps. And although you can find alate or winged ants, most of the ants you're gonna come across are going to be wingless. Many Hymenoptera do have stingers, but certainly not all. And long antennae are a pretty standard trait, but many orders of insects have long antennae. However, using all of these characteristics in conjunction with one another should allow you to identify Hymenopterans. One thing all Hymenoptera do share is their holometabolus. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know this means they have a four-stage metamorphosis, from egg, to larvae, to pupae, to adult. Now, although most Hymenopteran larvae are legless, eyeless, and very simplistic, Sawfly larvae almost look like caterpillars, with functional legs, simple eyes, and well-developed mouthparts. Given their staggering diversity, it should come as no surprise that Hymenopterans serve a variety of roles in our environments. Let's start with the one that everybody talks about, pollination. So when we talk about pollination, everyone immediately jumps to Apis mellifera, the European honeybee. And don't get me wrong, this species is amazing. It helps us pollinate a variety of crops, $15 billion worth of crops in the United States alone, actually, all the while producing great tasting honey. However, there are many other Hymenopterans that pollinate as well. Bumblebees, wet bees, mining bees, carpenter bees, and that's just to name a few. Wasps can sometimes pollinate, but they're generally not the best at it as they don't have as many hairs for the pollen to stick to. However, wasps are critical in the regulation of arthropod populations through parasitism and predation. Those parasitoid wasps we mentioned earlier, as well as the generalist predatory wasps, can mount a strong defense against a myriad of pests. So oftentimes, when a pest is introduced into a new area, scientists will look for parasitic wasps from its native range that can be released into its invasive range for population control. The reason is that many of these parasitic wasps are very specialized on the hosts they target. So if they can find a parasitic wasp from its native range that it can introduce into its new range, it may not harm a lot of the other local species since it's hyper-specialized on the pest. Obviously, scientists are gonna do a ton of research before they go releasing a parasitic wasp to ensure that it's not going to harm any native species. Sawflies can also sometimes be parasitic control agents. And do you remember how we talked about how sawfly larvae look kind of like caterpillars? 
Well, like caterpillars, sawfly larvae can be a crucial food resource to birds and other insect predators. And we haven't even talked about ants. As well as being a food resource, ants can aerate the soil through their tunneling and clean up detritus, or dead organic matter, in their environment. But even with Hymenoptera, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Sawfly larvae can sometimes be a pest as they feed on the foliage of many trees and shrubs. Although, oftentimes this damage is more aesthetic rather than endangering the actual health of the plant. There is some direct agricultural damage caused by red imported fire ants and other invasive ants. However, most of the time our conflicts with Hymenoptera come from their ability to sting. As someone who did much of their master's fieldwork in southern Georgia, fire ant stings are no joke and they can be very prominent in many agricultural areas posing a legitimate risk to field workers. Bees and wasps can also deliver some nasty stings, and if you're allergic, they can even be life-threatening, killing around 60 people in the United States each year. However, without Hymenoptera, nearly all of us would die. So let's talk about some ways we can conserve them. Now I may sound like I'm beating a dead horse here, but plant native plants. Both native trees and herbaceous plants can provide critical floral resources and habitat to a variety of our Hymenopteran friends. So to maximize your impact, make sure whatever plants you're planting are naturally occurring in your region. You can also create some habitat through bee houses. Although we often think of Hymenopterans as hive-building colony creatures, most Hymenopterans are solitary, and even something as simple as a log with variably sized holes drilled into it can provide habitat for a myriad of Hymenopterans. Another way to help these critters is by limiting the chemical spraying on your property. Maybe next time, instead of bringing out the herbicide, try hand weeding where you can. So remember, the Hymenopterans are the ants, bees, wasps, and sawflies. In general, they have four membranous wings, with the forewings being longer than the hindwings, a constricted wasp waist, or a petiole, long antennae, and sometimes a stinger. They are holometabolists, having a four-stage metamorphosis from egg to larvae to pupae to adult. They are critical in their ecologic roles, such as pollination, pest control, soil aeration, detritus removal, and as a food resource. They can be a nuisance to us through their nasty stings, but in general, we should try to conserve them through the planting of native plants, the building of bee houses or other habitat, and the limiting of chemical applications on our property. Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope to see y'all again soon with a new order. Peace.